What's up, everybody? I'm Leo Rays Rayon. I'm Josh Glaze Glazer. And today, man, you know, we're going over the, the Saints, the New Orleans Saints, Josh hometown team, man, uh, the draft class, man. Honestly, man, uh, I thought it was pretty damn good. It was a really Saints draft class, man. You know, y'all got a kid from Houston from Westside High School, Peyton Turner, who went to U of H, man. Uh, you know, honestly, man, didn't know too much about him. I had seen his name and stuff, but, man, when I seen his film on him, you know, it, it was pretty crazy, man. So let us know what you think about him, man. Yeah, he's he, – the more you watch him, the more you like. The problem is that not many people knew about him going in. He had a – he had some late late draft, like right before the draft, there was a lot of buzz that he was going to go first and uh, or or early second. Um, and I've heard from multiple people that it, it was probably his his floor was like the top of the second round. So – there's going to be a lot of people saying it was a reach. There was better players available, and maybe there were, but there's also a Sean Payton has a type, and when he sees a defensive end that he likes, he, he's going to go after it. If there's no, uh, if there's no other position that has a higher uh, positional value, mm -hmm. so I mean with Payton Turner, you're going to get a really heavy-handed guy wow. that has a good get off, has really good bend for a six-seven, six-six, two-seventy guy. Um, He's got crazy arms. I mean, his arms are the longest of any D-line in the last 20 years, which is kind of crazy to think. I think they're like 35 and a half inch arms. Yeah. Um, but you, you get like – and the thing is that the Saints really focus on the RAS, which is your relative athletic score. And what happens is they combine all the information that they get from pro days and, and combines and what you weigh in at, and they kind of – it puts into a – puts it into a uh, formula and it comes out as your uh, RAS score. And I believe he got a 9.7, mm -hmm. which anything above a nine is elite. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what they've, if you look in their past few drafts since Jeff Ireland came in as the, uh, as the draft guru in terms of head of college scouting and everything, he's really focused on prototypes and fulfilling two big areas, uh, actually three big areas. One, obviously film has to be good. Two, your RAS has to be, a, has to be above nine because you don't want to have to draft a guy in the first that has limitations athletically. And third is you got to be smart. And the thing with being smart in this case is Peyton Turner got a 35 on the Wonderlick, which is like quarterback level good. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it really gives you – and plus he, he's one of those guys that the only thing that's going to hold him back is health or yeah. opportunity. And I don't think he's going to run into opportunity issues because Sean Payne plays whoever's, whoever the best player is, um, no matter what the draft is. You've seen multiple times, whether it was Pierre Thomas uh, making the roster of a fourth round pick, uh, Antonio Pippen back in the day. Um, but I, the, the, the only other thing is the injuries, obviously, and you can't really worry about that. There's, everyone's going to get hurt. And yeah, you got to go for what you think the player can be as long as they get cleared medically. What, what I thought was great about Peyton, man, uh, initially, immediately while watching him was just, like, his hand, the way he used his hands, man. I mean, it's crazy. Like, I hate to say, you know, I, I mean, you know, it, it reminds, like, I think I was talking to Josh about this a few days ago, um, he, and then he, he brought up the fact that he started off for playing a lot of defensive tackle, and it does kind of look like, I mean, like an Aaron Donald, Grady, Jared type of hand usage, you know? And then, so, like, as I look at his RAS score, you know, the first four names, man, it's crazy. Uh, Utira Gross Matos, you know, who is a young player that, I mean, very athletic person, you know, and then it gets interesting with uh, Preston Smith, from Mississippi State, you know, Ezekiel Ansaw, and then uh, the one that I thought was crazy was Chandler Jones, you know what I mean? So, you know, he's, I mean, as big and as, you know, athletic as he is, like, he, it's not like he doesn't, he, he's a good football player, you know what I'm saying? He, like, he has technique, and I honestly, like, it was, it was shocking for me, because, you know, I mean, it wasn't that shocking, but it was just like, damn, like, you know, how many U of H players have been drafted in the first round? Like, yeah, not that yeah, I can, Ed, Ed, Ed Oliver is the only one I can oh, think of. Yeah, 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 I forget. Like, yeah, but he, I know he's. I mean, he's like kind of like an anomaly, though. Like, he's like. Yeah, yeah, he, I mean, it's crazy that he even went to U of H, 
you still to me. But he did. The the story behind that is that he had a torn ACL in in high school that didn't allow him to kind of get the exposure that he needed. So yeah. he was a two star prospect. So it didn't really. He kind of just went wherever he could and kind of went. Talking about Payton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And and one thing I've heard, and you can talk about this too, is there's been a lot of there's a lot of PTSD from the Saints trading two firsts for uh camp for Cam Jordan now for Marcus Davenport, mm-hmm. which is kind of <laughs> which is I mean you gotta you gotta risk it to get the biscuit if you're gonna follow uh good old uh, Bruce Arians. But the thing with that is they're very different players. Like Peyton Turner, first of all, he can rush from two hands down on the ground or he can rush from the dirt. Like Marcus Davenport still hasn't figured that out on how to get off a snap from getting his hand down because he's been playing up his whole life Mm -hmm. because he started a receiver. Peyton Turner is a defensive player. He switched from deep tackle. You keep talking, bro. Sorry. I'm just gonna pause and then we restart. You're good. You're good. Mm-hmm. No, you don't have to stop pausing. I just so you can cut it out. Yeah. Yeah. So so back like, I see more of uh, Peyton Turner kind of in a Cam Jordan role more than a Marcus Davenport similar because Jordan's one of those guys that kind of played football his whole life, has had the had the flexibility in college to play both inside and out, played more of three four, so he had that experience. And I think I see similar hand usage and similar. Uh, I think, truthfully, he's probably more explosive of athlete than Cam is. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Cam is probably a better, more refined football player coming out. Yeah. So maybe, I mean, it's just hard to say because Cam has been so great. But I almost view him as a potential replacement for Cam if Cam doesn't pick it back up after this year where he had a down year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I really – the more I watch him, it's like you said, man, the more I watch him, I'm like – I really like I like how he plays, man. He has like a he's really quick, man. He's really quick, and to be that quick and to be that size is crazy. And I mean, like y'all y'all really kind of have these fronts that uh nobody is like really like y'all don't really have guys that are just like just pure speed, like you know, like light edge rushers that you know, like y'all don't have any. Uh, what's that dude that used to play for Atlanta? The the dude that had like seventeen sacks one one. Yeah, season, yeah. yeah, man. Like y'all don't have any players like that. So I think that, like, I think first of all, that's a good thing. And you know, y'all like the Saints, man, are a really physical defense. You know, so I think it's honestly a perfect fit. I think one thing that he's gonna do, he's gonna get in better shape immediately. You know, what I mean, uh, just being in an NFL facility, he's going to, you know, get stronger. He's probably going to get quicker and faster as, you know, he gets stronger and stuff. And I think that this can be a pick, man, that in the future, like while people, it might not be the most exciting pick on draft night, but once he starts to play, you know, and, you know, God willing, he stays healthy, man. I mean, he can really fuck the league up, you know what I mean? So. I think yeah, he, he has that potential to step right in. It's hard to cut you off, but to step right in for that, Trey Hendrickson loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What they could do is maybe slide Carl Granderson, who's shown a lot of improvement. You slide him from Wyoming last year. He was undrafted, but super talented. Mm Kind of had some off-the-field stuff that allows him, but Mm -hmm. that allowed him to drop. But he would slide more into that speed rusher, Trey Hendrickson role, and then you would move uh, Peyton Turner into that Carl Granderson role to kind of ease him in. Yeah, you're right, right, right. And that, that's assuming that Cam Jordan gets back to what he was, but that's not necessarily something you can assume at this point. Yeah, because how old is, is he? Thirty three. I think he's thirty one to thirty two. I mean, I think I think he still has some. Be older, yeah. He's still he's still gonna, gonna play well, but you know it is what it is. I mean, you know it's it's a tough league, and you know people get older. So yeah, man. Yeah, and, and D linemen kind of fall off too because of how physical everything is. They don't. Mm-hmm. It's not, not usually graceful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. For edge guy. So so moving forward, man. Uh, Pete Werner, man, uh, linebacker out of Ohio State. You know, uh, I'm looking at his RAS grade nine point five two. Good good size. You know, uh, I want to say he's like six three. He's he's kind of like a. He's pretty much like, I, I mean, he's like a, I, this is going to sound really hilarious, but he's like a modern traditional linebacker. 
<laughs> you know, he's quick enough to cover, but at the same yeah. time, he's not like these guys that can't stack blocks, you know, and can't get off of blocks. Like he's he's a he's a physical linebacker that can move, and you know, uh, I mean, shit, he I, I think he fits well with the Saints. <laughs> you know what I mean, like. A defense with a lot of character, you know, he's a he's a player that, you know, he's not going to let anyone, you know, punk him on, on the field, you know. So, moving forward, I, yeah, I kind of got got off. But, yeah, con, con, you know, good size. Uh, his, his vertical, he, he man, he has a 40-inch vertical, <laughs> you know, crazy. That's, you know? Ins- that's insane. That's serious explosive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, really great broad jump. Really fast, man. 4.62 speed, you know. Uh, his his split was a uh, man. He had a insane split, insane a- acceleration, man. Uh, you know his ten yard split was one point five seconds. That's pretty damn crazy. Uh, you know agility, uh, not as much. You know his shuttle was a four point three eight three cone drill was really good six point nine. And to put this into um into a uh, you know into perspective, man, I want to say Jamar Chase ran about a 6.9 cone drill. So this motherfucker can Yeah, look. anything – the best way to look – sorry to cut you off, but the best thing to look at for that is anything under seven is good. Yeah, like exactly. Anything under seven for a linebacker, deep lineman is good. It's crazy. It's, yeah. yeah, it's basically – that's like edge rusher material. Can they turn the edge if you want to look at it like that? Mm-hmm. And you can kind of use that for every other thing, every other movement in football, but that's kind of – yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's he's one of those guys that there's there's kind of a wide range of views on him. I've seen some people love the pick. I see some people think that he can't cover, which is kind of weird when you look at the film. Um he's just got he's a big dude that really moves well and doesn't really hasn't I mean knock on wood, hasn't really um uh, missed any time with injuries, which is something that the Saints could use after uh having Quan uh get injured at the end of the year which is some hopefully he comes back and is able to contribute but mm-hmm. um he's a free agent right now but someone like that that's more injury prone and i think he can fit really well with demario the only the only question i would have is you kind of have to stick demario still at the mic i don't think he can play mic because i don't know if he has that that quickness in short area space side to side like you said, with the shuttle wasn't in, it wasn't a great, and that's kind of a, a big, uh, a big number to look at for a middle linebacker. So I think he's probably more of a will, which is fine. I mean, Demario is great either way, and the Saints kind of used them uh, interchangeably. I could see by the end of the year that he is, he and Demario are on the field like 90% of the time, mm-hmm. um, and that's that makes it weird though for last year's third round pick that they love Zach Bond who they tried to move the middle linebacker and I don't know if that's just the more of a long-term thing they're looking at to eventually replace the Mario a few years down the road but it's going to force them to be more creative I think by drafting this guy that fits so well they're going to have to be more creative with uh Zach Bond and maybe allow him to do more pass rush stuff off the edge yeah 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 I mean which makes sense because I mean think about some of the fronts y'all can have bro like you know that should that could be fucking crazy to have, you know, you know y'all could basically have five, you know, five people up front with Zach Bond on the edge and then having those two linebackers. So the Saints defense gets scarier with this pick. Like I was saying, he's six foot three, um, you know, two hundred forty pounds. Yeah, yeah two forty two. That's what they got him at. Yeah, this was a good pick. You know what I mean? And y'all needed a linebacker. You know what I mean? So I think it was. <laughs> We've had very hard, very bad uh, track record of drafting linebackers, so hopefully this works. And I think what they did was they said, okay, all of our Ohio State picks have worked so far, we're, so we're going back and we're just going to draft the best uh, Ohio State linebacker that we can think of to fit with the uh, – Well, I mean, shit, you know, if there's one thing that Ohio State, you know, traditionally has is, like, decent linebackers and shit. I mean, you know, hopefully we can get some damn A.J. Hawk in this motherfucker, you know. Oh, man, that's a that's a throwback <laughs> name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, he was great, man. All right, man, moving forward, man, uh, the third-round pick, you know, uh, a, a cornerback who I have, you know – yeah, why, you, why don't you speak on him first? I, I, watched him, I watched him for a minute, man. You know, he's a uh, he's really good, man. Paulson Adebo. Uh, I'm pulling up his height and weight right now, but he's, he's six. He's six one, uh, one ninety two. So he's yeah. like the prototype four four speed. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, my bad, my bad. Okay, okay. Are you there, Josh? Yeah, I'm here. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, six one. Yeah, I mean, long, long. You know, you know, fast, rangy. You know, he's like, uh, yeah. So he has big, good size as as far as the ras grades. Good size, great size, actually. My bad. Uh, composite his uh, his explosion grade thirty six and a half inch vertical. You know, uh, good broad jump. You know, four point four five speed. Um, then his agility is is what what really like turns some heads. You know, he has a four four point one shuttle, uh, six point six nine uh, three cone. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, he's really fast. Really, well, that's really interesting because the biggest thing that people talk about is that he has trouble in the agility department. And if he has numbers like that, it kind of because you also see in tape that he struggles against quick some quicker guys yeah. getting in and out of break. So maybe what that tells you is it's more of a technique issue and he's not technically sound, which isn't allowing him to get in and out of his breaks easier to react and everything. Mm -hmm. One thing that you can see and that makes him kind of a fun watch when you're looking through tape and everything mm -hmm. is that dude just – he has eyes for the quarterback. He has eyes for the ball. And he just makes some of these the most insane interceptions that you've you've seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coverage because he has that speed to recover. So he almost baits some guys in, and it comes in out of nowhere and makes them play. He he yeah. just I think that's something the Saints needed and something you can really coach up. And he's kind of the perfect corner for Chris Richard, who built the whole uh, Legion of Boom. Yeah, so maybe, yeah. Maybe if we sign uh, Richard Sherman and bring him in, and they kind of not compete, but he mentors this guy. It could be a really special, uh, special pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think the same way. I mean, obviously, he's not as big as Sherm, but like, you know, he's a guy that. I mean, you know, he's a six-one corner. You know, what I mean, like that's pretty damn big. You know, six-one, two hundred. That's safety yeah. size. That's, yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. a big dude. Yeah, and I think that you know he probably has a little bit of versatility. I can see him playing nickel too, right? You think he can play inside too? Yeah. I – I would worry because of his, his side side. struggle. At, yeah, struggle mm -hmm. side to side at this point. Yeah, but um, we'll I think that. they would. If anything, they stick him outside or play yeah, right, right. things. Yeah, because he's big. I mean, you want that size and outside anyway. So yeah, man, I thought it was a good pick. You know, great yeah. ball skills. You know, um, who else? He is raw though. He is definitely raw. So don't expect him to be a finished product right away. He just his inconsistencies. Like one game, he'll look great against double moves. The next game he'll just get victimized. Like, it'll just – it's just really up and down because we really don't know. And the other thing we don't know about is what kind of improvements has he made on that year off. We have zero idea of what he's being like. So maybe all that testing and all those numbers may be a reason to think that he's improved some on that technique and on that ability to get in and out of breaks and stay with a more shifty receiver. So maybe that's kind of a good omen, but we'll, we'll just have to wait to see until he gets – on the field in a training camp and is allowed to kind of show his stuff. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, man, so moving on from that, bro, we got, uh, you know, another damn quarterback, Ian Book, you know. Um, very small quarterback, you know, but who gives a damn about size? I mean, Drew Brees just had a great career, and he was, uh, you know, about probably smaller than him, right, as far as height. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was shorter. He's a little bit shorter than well, he's he Drew, had those, Drew had those big old hands and those big old feet. So he's like a little man and a, a big man in a little man's body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm not sure on uh, Ian Book's hand size and all that, but um, I know he's a really good athlete. Mm -hmm. that, that just I have respect for him in terms of let, rising up to the level of competition and kind of just getting done what needs to get done. I mean, you don't win 40 games. You don't go 40 and 5 at Notre Dame um, if you can't play quarterback. Like, he obviously knows how to play quarterback. He is – flashes where he makes some of these really, really impressive throws that are across the field. Like many people say he doesn't have the arm talent, but then he once in a while he'll show you like, oh, I can make this throw. So it makes me kind of wonder if it's more of an issue with his with his technique and his throwing mechanics, which would be perfect because the Saints have kind of the infrastructure in place with Jameis and 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 who all the people that Jameis work with that maybe he can get that hook up and kind of figure all that out but he's he's one of those guys that's just kind of uh he's just a baller you know he just knows how to make plays when shit is going real crazy 
You see all the flip plays he makes. He runs a bunch. Really efficient, really smart. Doesn't throw a ton of picks. What, he was 65% completion last year, 12 games, 15 touchdowns, only three picks. Mm-hmm. And there was much, there wasn't as much talent in Notre Dame this year as there was in years past, the receiver. Which yeah. kind of maybe limited him some, but he still took advantage of some of the tight ends he had and such. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on him? Because I'd, I'd be interested to see what you think. I mean, I think, like, you know, exactly like what you said. You know, he's six foot, you know, 200 pounds. He's not the biggest guy. But I mean, he's you know he can he 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 doesn't really turn the ball over too much. He you know he's just a, he's a good football player. You know, and, I mean he's not like a Zach Wilson or anything. But shit, I mean you know he's going into a situation where he has a good coach, a good coordinators, you know, a good quarterback room between you know him and Jameis. I mean, and Taysom Hill. You know, they've all been around Drew Brees. Anyone who Drew Brees is t- touched, like you know. Who, who, I mean, the Saints just have a, like you were saying, just the infrastructure to help develop them. I mean, now, does that mean that he becomes, like, you know, a starter franchise quarterback? We don't know. We don't know about that really about anyone. But I think, like we were saying about Davis Mills, you know what I'm saying? Like, who knows what can happen down the road? You know what I mean? He can throw the ball and, you know, shit. I mean, you know, once a guy learns the playbook and feels comfortable in the offense, you know, I mean, shit. At that point, you know, shit, I mean, he can be as good as he wants to be. You were about to say something? Yeah, that, that's another thing that's interesting you bring it up about the playbook. Notre Dame always ran a really interesting offense because Brian Kelly's one hell of a coach. Mm-hmm. So it, it allowed him – I think he was able to see things and experience different offenses and different, different techniques and different things that other coaches, other quarterbacks haven't because right. he was there for so much time and he got so comfortable with everything. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of ups, in terms of potential and all that, when you look at a fourth round pick, the very low chance that he's going to become a starter and become a great quarterback, right? But if you can look at him and say, okay, at the minimum, I think in a few years or even a year or even this year, depending on what he shows in camp and his grasp of the playbook, I could see him as being a really good um, uh, backup that can come in, and has those football instincts that allows you to kind of drop him into the middle of a game, and it allows him to really thrive just based off of what he has done in the past and he has so much experience right that's the other thing that it's good to bring up is that bill parcells has this viewpoint this is since sean payton is a bill parcells disciple everything i mean he takes a lot of that to heart right and there's this checklist of all the things that you should look for in a quarterback and a lot of times that's not achievable anymore because of how quickly guys are coming in and out of the league and and, and how early guys are coming out of college. So you're not going to get a lot of that. But he's one of, the, one of the few guys that actually checks all the boxes in terms of starts, uh, uh, games, wins, everything, percentage, all, all the stuff that, uh, that you look for at uh, being a, having a good sample size and kind of being a trustworthy prospect. Right, right, right. Yeah, man. So I agree. I think it was a good pick. And like like you were saying, uh, one thing that Josh says a lot is that if you don't have a franchise quarterback, you know, you should pick one every year. And I mean, it's a valuable position, you know, I mean, uh, quarterbacks hold value. So I think that I mean, unless they just completely suck. I mean, you know, but yeah, you know, I think that, you know, Jameis, like as good as I think Jameis is, and I think as good as Jameis can be in the Saints offense, you know, I think that, you know, the verdict is still out. We have to see how he plays this year to, you know, because he's on, he has one more, he has one year, right? One year yeah, left. It's a one year deal. That's all. So, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, he has to play well or, you know, you never know. So, this I'm, is his trial year. Yeah. It, yeah. it allows uh, one, one other thing about book that's interesting that, is different from a lot of people's. He's he's one of those guys that's kind of polarizing, but I, I was I was listening to an uh, interview Sean Payton did uh, the last few days, and he said that he, Ian Book was the one player that he got a ton of calls from different GMs that were either in the league, coaches that are in the league, or guys that were retired that said, "You really might have got one of the best quarterbacks in this whole class," mm-hmm. which is very interesting because you don't really think of that because he's short, doesn't have an amazing arm. Kind of, I hate to say, it's very similar to what was said about Drew Brees. But the thing was, Drew Brees was more talented as the thrower coming out. He had more of um, 
but we don't know if that was that's Ian Book or that's just his technique is really shitty or is so it'll be it's he's an interesting prospect and he's definitely a Sean Payton kind of uh, style of quarterback. Yeah, 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 for sure. So yeah, man, I think it was a good pick, good value. All right, so moving on to the fifth round. Well, y'all didn't have a fifth round. Wait, what the fuck? Moving to the sixth round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So y'all got Landon Young from Kentucky, offensive tackle, man. Um, what do you think about this pick, Josh? I mean, y'all already have – y'all line is set, but as we all know in the NFL, you can never have enough depth at any position, especially offensive line. So um, what, do you, what do you think about him, man? I mean, I, I don't usually love watching offensive line film, but this dude was first team all SEC. He's been a, he's been part of that wall wall that allowed Kentucky to pretty much only run the ball and have <laughs> zero passing game and still win games. Yeah. So I mean he was he's a left tackle there. He can play inside. He can play outside. The dude six seven three twenty. Mm-hmm. I mean and he moves like he has the quickness to deal with anybody inside and everything. So I just I mean I love the pick. I think the value is really good. I think the guy has so much experience playing against high level competition all throughout the SEC that it's it's pretty impressive the only thing is he's rough a little bit in pass pro but I mean you're not going to get a you'd rather have a guy that just murders people in the run game and just just takes their souls as much as they can and and there's little struggles a little bit in uh in pass pro but as long as they have the tools and I'd be interested to see what uh the RAS is for him what his skills are um, so I have I have that up, man, That's while you're speaking on it. Uh, you know, obviously, like, this dude, you know, he's very big and very huge, you know what I mean? So he's, like, not he, – his grade was a 9.18. Uh, he has a good size, which, I, I mean, I guess they gave it to him because, like, he was 320, 6'7". I mean, to me, I would say that's pretty damn great size. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good – and if you watch him, he's not a sloppy uh, 320 either. He's well put together, and you can tell why he has good movement skills. Yeah, yeah, great, great explosion, thirty inch vertical, which for a guy that big is fucking crazy. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of weight to go up thirty inches. Speed, man, uh, five point one forty eight forty five point one eight forty yard dash. You know, very good ten yard split, one point seven two, which mm-hmm. I mean, you know, for screen plays and anything where he's gonna have to run, like, I mean, that's kind of damn scary for any linebacker or you know corner safety that you know <laughs> sees that that big ass dude moving out and you know that's that's bad there's a lot of, a lot of business decisions being made in the sec when he was playing right 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 and then uh so his agility you know i mean obviously he's not going to be the most agile person side to side i mean he's fucking six foot seven 300 some pounds yeah, yeah. yeah. 4.89 shuttle 7.7 a three cone, which is good, They're pretty damn good for a guy that size. So, I mean, to get that kind of value, like we, you know, I mean, the draft is all about value. You know, I think, you know, having that, you know, drafting the most valuable players at the points that you pick, almost like if you have a good team, especially that you want your team to not have so like so many holes to where it makes it to where you can just draft the the best value. And I think this was a great value pick because y'all's line is already. Probably, probably a top three line in the NFL. I mean, for sure, a top three line in the NFL. Uh, Armstead is getting a little bit older, but I mean, shit. I mean, it's never you never know when someone gets hurt, and you you have the ability to move people around, and you know he can play multiple positions. It seems like everyone in your line is athletic enough to play every damn position on the line. So, I think this is a good pick, man. You know, uh, yeah, you, it's never it's never wrong to draft a lineman late or even early. I mean. Because you never know we're going to need it. It's mm-hmm. just – it's like quarterback. Right. If you draft a quarterback every year, you should probably draft the offensive lineman every year. You should probably draft the defensive lineman. Those are like the three positions you should try to add youth to every year. Mm-hmm. And I think they did a really good job from that. They traded up for him a lot, just like they did for Paulson and Debo. Mm-hmm. Um, so so they, they obviously targeted the guy and they went up and got him. But, yeah, I think it's a great value and it's it's – there's, I don't see there. I don't see a way that he's not on the roster and not. He probably won't play this year because they have, they re-signed James Hurst and they have a good amount of depth on the offensive line. But who knows? I mean, if he if he balls out, then it's gonna be hard to keep him off the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
right, all right, man. So li listen to this, man. We have the last pick of the draft. Saints seven round pick, Kawan Banker Baker, who is a six foot one, two hundred pound receiver. He has a very good um you know, from a smaller school, South Alabama. Uh really good size, you know. Perfect I mean, kinda like the perfect kind of size for a receiver. Um, you know, you're big enough to go make plays, you know, you know, big enough to not get bullied, but also not too big that you can't move, you know what I mean? Uh, not so basically, you know, he has a lead explosion, 40, 40 inch vertical, really good broad jump, uh, speed, man. Uh, this guy is pretty damn fast. He runs a 4.45, but the thing that's pretty good about him, like I, I like to look into the splits because it shows you how fast people are getting up. He has a 10 yard split that is 1.49, 20 yard split, 2.15. So that's you know his acceleration is is really good. You know, what I mean? yeah, that that's special for that size. His uh his agility, you know, was was pretty like, I mean, subpar. You know, four point four one shuttle, seven point four two. You know, uh, uh, recon. recon, yeah. So I mean, you know, but I mean, I think. I haven't really watched too much of him, but Josh, I know you really like him, man. So, what about his game? Do you think is makes him unique and special? Man, I I think the cool thing with him is he kind of got onto the radar. He wasn't on anyone's radar until he kind of showed all those numbers you talked about showed out at his pro day. Mm -hmm. um, he's super elusive. Speed is pretty is pretty good. Um, his his burst is really special, is what yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah. And my bad, my bad. My bad. He, I said, I think I said six foot one, two hundred pounds. He's actually six foot one, like around two twenty. So that yeah, makes six one, two fifteen. So he's basically built like a running back. Exactly. And exactly. that's kind of how they used him. If you watch, they used him a lot in triple option as the pitch guy. He used yeah. him in jet sweeps. They kind yeah. of just tried to get. He's a hell of a blocker. Mm -hmm. Really puts his nose in there. I mean, he's kind of the perfect Sean Payton receiver. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of the speed guy, he reminds me a little bit, has some, a little bit of Robert Meacham to him, a little bit of just kind of a mix of all the different guys the Saints have used throughout the years. But I, I think they're going to be able to take advantage of him right away as, as long as he makes the roster because there's, he's, as, because there's quite a few of guys kind of in that, uh, in that type that are already on the team with, uh, Marquez Callaway and Jawan Johnson and kind of that, those fringe guys that bring stuff to the table, but, Kind of what else are you gonna do? And I think his key to making the roster will be whether or not he can contribute in special teams as a gunner or something like that. But I, th I think Sean will probably end up holding on to him just because uh, uh, his imagination and all the things that he sees, he can use them as. He can kind of, I think he has the ability to kind of supplant Deontay Harris and not have to use Deontay as much in terms of jet sweeps and that those kind of things. Because mm -hmm. you watch the tape and he just has these instincts. Mm -hmm. And these ability to break tackles that you just don't think like a lot of these plays you watch his film aren't blocked up very well, aren't schemed up great, or they'll just like go away from him from a whole half when he's working the first half. So it was kind of frustrating in that sense. But he, when he got the touches, he had the production and he he made plays. He was always a high effort guy. Um, yeah, that's kind of – he's raw in terms of route running. He needs that work. But, I mean, who, what receiver isn't in the seventh round? Yeah, as long yeah. as you have those tools. And like you said, he's a really nice size. He's kind of the similar size to, like, a Jamar Chase, um, which makes sense that he's not maybe as good at side-to-side -side quickness and everything. But they were probably looking for more of a speed element, this pick, and that's what they got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, overall, man uh... – I think this was a great draft for the uh, for the Saints, man. I mean, y'all got a linebacker, you know. Y'all got. I mean, a great defense becomes, you know. I mean, great defense gets better. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, yeah, it just get the depth, the depth, and uh, the quality depth is there now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's getting there. There's still holes in corner. There's still uncertainty a linebacker. I think this draft can be really good, but it's a lot of guys that are projecting. The only guys that are kind of right away, you kind of know what you're getting is probably Warner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Turner to a point, but there's still you can you know he's going to be able to play the run well. You know Paulson and Debo uh, in certain situations could be good as a as a dime uh, 
as a dime linebacker or receiver. That's another thing about we didn't talk about with the Debo. He's one hell of a tackler, too. Not one of those guys who's going to fade away from him and he's going to go up and hit you. So maybe that allows him to play some safety, some just kind of mix him in there. So I and I think Dennis Allen, um, Dennis Allen's defense is going to allow these guys to really kind of set in because they've, they've had so long, such a long time with him working with Sean to really understand what they're looking for and kind of what players fit in the system. I don't think I'd give the, give it a, an A grade or a, or maybe a B minus C plus is kind of where I'm at just because so many guys are projecting and it, it was definitely solid. And there's, I don't see a single pick that I'm like, I get nauseous about. There's no, there's no Natrell Jamerson picks, no Cameron Moore picks that make, or no Rick Leonard's that are like, don't even make the team. Like I can't even, I'm don't even get me started on some of that shit, but like, uh, yeah, I think they've done, they did a good job of knowing that they had what eight picks to work with and came away with six players. Mm -hmm. um, I, obviously I think there was chatter that they wanted to move up for a corner, but I'm, I'm kind of glad that, they they didn't do that because I kind of view 2022 someone made this point and I'm kind of I'm stealing it but I, I think it's very a very thing a good thing to remember with all this is that 2022 I kind of see as a super draft because you have guys that had that extra year of eligibility that came back to college that was they're all given a free year of extra eligibility so I think next year is going to have way more talent on the defensive end mm -hmm. right right of really good quality play saw the value there mm -hmm. yeah man so shit yeah i i agree man i think that the saints i think i think it was a solid draft you know when you're picking so late in the draft bro it's hard as hell to to you know have a perfect draft anyway you know what i mean so i think it was solid you know pete warner is someone i think uh I like to, uh, you know, I, I like to see what he's gonna do. I mean, Payton Turner too. Y'all have a bunch of interesting players, and y'all have the coaches that'll, you know, use them in pretty, you know, innovative and creative ways. So, man, um, that's, that's pretty, probably the biggest. That's the biggest thing that's gonna help these guys is that they have a very, a very clear. Uh, they have clear communicators on this coaching staff that allow them to really understand what they're supposed to do at mm -hmm. the very beginning and not give them too much to do right away, kind of ease them in and make them feel comfortable so that they can grow. Right, right, right. Man, you got anything else to say about this, man? Or should... No, no, we'll get, we'll come back to the Saints and we'll do a ton of stuff where we'll break down each position, look at kind of where we see it, where the holes are, where we think that might be a sneaky, uh, a sneaky strength or a weakness. We'll get into all that with uh, everything. If you guys have any questions, or anything you want us to talk about, please send it in the comment on the video. Send us a chat. Send us something. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Yeah, whatever. Like, subscribe. Let us know. Even if you don't like us, let us know why so we can get better. Yeah. Um, or you can just go fuck yourself. <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. You're getting a little excited there. But, yeah, cool, man. I Yeah, I mean. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where to go for that. All right, I'm just, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. All right, y'all. All right, man. Like, sub, and share, man. You know, we'll have more stuff coming, man. It's going to be a fun year. All right, y'all take care.